Hey, Seb, look at this. Well, we are supposed to do electromagnetism here, not mechanics. So <laughs> please use the slinky differently. <laughs> Okay, so in this experiment, you'll actually be using the slinky coil to measure the permeability of free space. So in this experiment, you're going to be using what's called a Hall probe, which you'll hopefully learn about at the very end of this course, to measure the magnetic field lines. So there's three parts to this experiment. In the first part, you'll be measuring the Earth's magnetic field. In the second part, you're going to be investigating a solenoid and the various factors that affect the magnetic field strength inside the solenoid. And then in the third part, you'll be using the slinky as a solenoid to get a measurement of mu naught, the permeability of free space. So with this Hall probe, it's really important that you take into account zero errors. So let's have a look at how we go about measuring the Earth's magnetic field. Now, where I'm standing, the Earth's magnetic field is literally coming up out of the floor at an angle to me. So we can draw the Earth's magnetic field, B Earth, this way. And what I'm going to need to do is measure the horizontal and vertical components of the Earth's magnetic field. So let's call that BH, B horizontal and this BV, B vertical. But there is a zero error with this probe. So how I'm going to do that is it's got a white dot on the end of the probe and it's literally measuring the magnetic field lines pointing out of that white dot. So I'll rotate this probe horizontally until I find the maximum magnetic field. At that point, I'm going to measure BH. So I'll take my first measurement the probe will be pointing this way, and I'm going to call that measurement B1H, my first horizontal measurement. In order to take into account this zero error, I'm going to need to make a second measurement where I point the probe in the opposite direction, so like that. So in that case, it's measuring the magnetic field going in that direction, and we'll call that B2H. Now, my measurement of B1H is literally equal to this horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field, BH, plus some zero error. B2H is measured in the opposite direction, so it's actually a measurement of minus BH. So B2H is equal to minus BH, but I've still got my zero error there, so it's plus the zero error. Now what I can do is I'm trying to get a measurement of BH, so I can solve these simultaneously. Let's call this one one and this one two. And if I do one minus two, you can see the zero errors will cancel out, whereas the BH components will actually add. So one minus two tells me that B1H, which is what I've literally measured off my computer screen, minus B2H, which is what I measured on the computer screen with my second measurement, pointing this way, is equal to 2BH. So using this, I can get a measurement for BH, the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. To get the vertical, I need to hold the probe vertically. I need to take a measurement up like that and the measurement down like that, and again, subtract them from each other and divide by 2. So that's how you're going to approach the first part of the experiment. In the second part of the experiment, you'll be using the slinky coil as your solenoid, and you know that for solenoids, B, the magnetic field strength, is given by mu naught Ni. You can derive this equation from Ampere's law, so make sure that you know how to derive it. Here, B is the magnetic field strength, mu naught is the permeability of free space, N is equal to the number of turns per meter, so it's the total number of turns divided by the length. Make sure that you measure this for your solenoid before you pack your solenoid up. You'll need to grab a meter ruler in the lab, and I is the current that you will be able to change the amount of current that flows through your solenoid. So let's have a quick look at the equipment that will be available to you for this lab exercise now.
This is the equipment that you're going to have available for this experiment. You've got the Hall probe. Just one point with the Hall probe, when you are measuring the Earth's magnetic field, make sure that it's as far away from the computers and other electronic devices as you can, because electronic devices tend to have lots of solenoids and things in them, and when there's current flowing through these, as you know, it generates a magnetic field. So just move it as far away from anything which you think might generate a magnetic field as you can. So you've got the Hall probe, which plugs into your Logger Pro and into the computer as normal. Remember, the Logger Pro needs the power and the USB cable into the computer. And then you have your slinky coil, which you set up as a solenoid, and you'll be running current through. You should set the power supply on the side here to 9 volts for this experiment. It should give out around about 2.5 amps when the resistance is low. You've got this rheostat for changing the resistance and hence the current flowing through your solenoid. You've got a switch because you are using high currents in this experiment, so you don't want to leave that current on for a long time. That will cause the solenoid, the slinky, to heat up. And so you should just push down the switch when you want to take the measurement. You've also got this mass here to hold one end of the solenoid. So by moving this, you can adjust the number of turns per unit length. You can also adjust how much of the slinky is hanging off the side of the desk. So set up a circuit so that it's coming out of the power through the rheostat and the switch through your ammeter. In this case, you're using the multimeter on the unfused setting as you are using high currents. Please don't use the fused setting, that will blow the fuse. And then after coming out of the ammeter, your current flows through your solenoid and back into your power supply. Okay, so I hope that you enjoy this experiment and hopefully you'll get a very accurate measurement for mu naught, the permeability of free space. It is possible to get very accurate with this experiment.